I think Trundle is only ever really good when there's a dedicated tank on the opponent's side. And uh, now there is definitely one of those as Leona's oh. going to be locked in. And here is Life's Tarek once again. Another champion that got some slight buffs on this patch. And that I love the Tarek pick so much. Um, best foot forward as we hop into this one as far as the early game is concerned because early game is what League of Legends is about these days uh, of this summer season because there's not a whole lot of range on Afrika's side. I feel like Bar uh, Ryze will be able to do a fair bit of stuff, but Ruler, he's likely not going to be able to as Life's trying to keep him alive, but it is just not going to happen. Life now going to get stunned up as Dread gets the chomp down, but that is first blood going over to Afrika and a great start for them. Yeah. Uh, liking the uh, the early game aggression from Rafika thus far, only landed them one kill, but uh, it has been successful as will fly. Yeah, does have his flash back up again as he's going to flash over the realm warp, tries to get himself out of the way. As Shockwave is going to pull them back. Dazzle barely misses, but now Clit is very angry and will be able to catch up to the Orianna, so he gets his revenge this time around. Oh, I think they know about Dread. Yeah, he does manage to get himself the red buff as he uh, gets punted towards the Krug camp. Yeah, real big amount of distance. In this scenario, it shouldn't be the biggest issue as this will be the plates that we talked about when this was picked up. I'm uh, gonna give a little bit more gold over as BD. Yeah, getting aggressive here onto Fly. He's running real fast. The Shockwave's gonna try and pull him away and good positioning there as Fly wants to get past the rise. But he's pitched himself a bit of a tent here in this brush as Clid and Life moving their way up as Dread puts down the pillar, flashes forward, Zenith plate's fantastic, and BDD is going to get shut down, and Clid and Life couldn't get there in time. There's a couple of hundred gold has now been bought back there by Fly, but it's still decent advantage for BDD. But this is actually really big. Being able to even out the Drakes and also get the Herald uh, on Afrika's side does mean that our Genji won't be able to rely on that win condition, and that's why they're going to be fighting for it, as we can see here. Cosmic Radiance is available, and Ruler, they're just going to try and turn on him. Chains of Corruption not quite working out there as Ruler flashes away, but now the positioning around the Drake is not exactly the best. As the Piercing Arrow does do a fair bit of work there towards the top side members in Dread and Keen, but it still will be Genji grabbing some mid control and giving up this Dragon. And I don't mind that with how low Ruler was taken. A really nice collapse there again. Lands that uh, sets that one up. And unfortunately, they don't actually have the damage available to go for a trade. If you get a first robot here, but you're feeling a lot happier as Genji, but instead, not really getting anything. You give the Drake. Uh, yeah, and Renekton, there's going to be a heck of a lot of healing. So neither of these teams are going to feel very good about giving this one up. As, uh, okay, we're going to throw out the Chains of Corruption. Dazzle doesn't find too much as Keen has to slice his way out. Health lead for Genji. As life, he's happy to give away a bit of his health bar as it looks like Afrika not willing to give this one up as that's a double kill instantly from Fly! Finds the shockwave and now Lahens is looking to follow up Rascal. It's gonna take a bit of killing to get him down as Subjugate is now ticking. Keen looking for the back line. Wants to find the slice angle but doesn't quite get in there. But Clint's still taking way too much damage. And Afrika will be able to get this out of turret and the dragon. Fly making the plays. It came out of nowhere! Oh lord, and this game is going to be BDD, right? Yeah, you put oh, your anathemas on BDD but... towards the later stage, and Dread's just going to be the happiest Trundle in the universe. Yeah, because uh, Lethality Varus not, not killing Tron, that's, not, that's no. not happening at all. Plus, if Dread just decides to build some armor, and then Anathema's onto Rise. Who kills him? No one. Exactly. True Shot Barrage does a lot of work there as Clid's in a bit of trouble. Solar Flare is going to connect. Lahens decides to actually hold back because the Shockwave is all they need to murder the bear. And Afrika, the setup for this Drake is just beautiful. 25 seconds and they'll have that one. They might even be able to get some work done onto this turret, but that's not what they care about. What they care about is creating space. You kill the jungler, you guarantee Soul Point. Second time! You see the you see the orb! It's there! Yeah. And it looks like Genji playing towards the bottom side of the map, but there's nothing really to play for down there as Afrika have inside track towards the Baron Pit if they'd like to get there. Okay, Solar Flare going to connect onto Ruler. He cleanses immediately as he needs to. Chains of corruption now on cooldown. But the big buttons are still up here for Genji. Uh, uh, yeah, um, Afrika have, uh, yeah, they're, they're on the correct side of this particular situation. 
This is getting a little bit awkward as this face-off, this K-Ram that we have in the mid lane, is um, very strange. Here it is. We're going to try it one more time. In they go. Cosmic Radiance. Rascal was outside of it, though, and he's just going to get chunked immediately. Ruler's in trouble. Keen goes down to his GA, and that is going to be Ruler already dead. BDD's gone as well. There is no damage remaining on Gen G, and I have a feeling they are no longer welcome in this game. This will be the turret taken down. This will most likely be the ace unless Clid is just going to stick on his fountain the entire time. And a Freaker have done it. They have the Ocean Soul, they have a Dream, and they will most likely have a slaughtered Nexus here in the Gen G base. Textbook game from a Freaker. They read Gen G like a book, and I don't think we're going to see Fly play Oriana again. Yeah. A very good game, and this is one of the lowest damage numbers for Keen that I have ever seen. But it didn't matter. I... It's kind of done so. You yeah. said you wanted hard engage, Chronicler. Yeah. Um, I reckon Scion fits that one, as Absolutely. that is going to be the choice. I love it. It's great into Renekton. It's exactly what you need. Um, Scion by himself. I don't think the greatest hard engage went parallel with Leona. Beautiful. You have a yeah. front line, someone who can just press W, eat all that poke from Afrika. Great. Shit. However, if like if they don't, Genji just wins, right? Because they just drive a train into Afrika and then Afrika so dies. He's gank. We come through. Yeah, that's the flash forward from life. Immediately, Leo's going to try and get out of there, but it's not going to work. Lahens going to try and pull clear back, but it's not going to take enough damage. The Ignite's ticking down. Meanwhile, Rascal's going to get killed as the Nidalee Renekton combo's working beautifully, and the Ignite was not enough to take down Clid. So it's a one for one in the end, but First Blood goes into the bottom side of the map as immediately the teleport from Rascal will bring him back in. So I think that Genji might be feeling better after this. I think they will. Uh, nice cancel there on the Decimating Smash. And um, this is actually a pretty good matchup for Renekton, if I remember correctly, because you can cancel out the shield. You, you can, uh, but I think that generally, like once you get your plated steel caps uh, and maybe a first uh, armor component, uh, you shrug off a lot of the damage. And the confidence here, I really like. Uh, life going in for the flash to give minimal response time available. Clid, and the tanker, not a turret shot, but he will be completely fine. As, um, this is so nice about Afrika. It's like one of the teams that picks Renekton in Italy and then dives like this, as you should. And it seems like that should be a given, but we both know in the LCK, it isn't always um, completely executed. Dread almost died there. He was. I expect that Kane should be able to do this. And there he goes. There's the flash forward. It's exactly what we were talking about, and Rascal's dead again. Perfect example. Yeah. Um, Drake should be started up here, because the moment that Dread shows, uh, I hope that Clit goes. Or am I going for a gank again? Might be looking for it. In he goes as Leo doesn't have the flash. That's a beautiful dredge line, though, as Lahens is going to sacrifice himself for the good of his AD carry. As now it's going to be a freaker in a lot of control. Bottom side, but also dirty farming up here towards the top side of the map as well. BDD is going to move in. The Zoe a little bit later to the party. Decimating smash is big, and that is just a dead Renekton. A little bit too early here as a freaker still looking for a little bit more potentially, but they've already lost their Renekton, and that is a disaster. Traps available, and they can hunt to zero someone. Oh, bubble connects. Oh, six. Yeah, and that is going to be a beautiful paddle star from Fly. The flash forward, Dread, going to find the auto as he turns back to a lady. And Afrika will even this one out. BDD also struggling here, as, of course, this is the Zoe playground right now. I'm trying to give you out here, <laughs> No, no, there's no out. <laughs> uh, that's a huge flash forward from Leo. They're going to look for it. Depth Charge is going to connect onto the Ezreal. Spear misses, but the Piercing Arrow is going to connect. And there are still some big health bars. Great Solar Flare from Life, though, as the Piercing Arrow misses, and the Spear does the same. So, unfortunately, Afrika are only going to be able to push out the bottom lane instead of actually picking up any kills. Late game, it's still not going to be very far. And I say as teleports come through, none for Rascal or BDD. Yeah, let's uh, put Ruler and Life into a problem situation as Life is going to be the target. He's going to try and Zenith Blade his way away. That was actually really beautifully done. Goes into his stopwatch to deny the depth charge, but it's not going to deny the rest of the damage. Dread gets himself out of the way, but Ruler answers back. Uh, I'm not sure whether Afrika is going to be able to easily take control of this position. As uh, that's a 
the, 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 another benefit of the build that we've seen here from Dread. Whoa, the going. Indo's life, that's hyper-aggressive. They want to be able to take down the Zoe, and they will do so. And now the train comes through as well. Goodbye, Lahen. And Genji, they're feeling like they're online already. That's all you need. Level 16 for BDD. He is just massive. As a Freaker, when, when they miss their poke, that's when the opportunity for Gen.G really starts to get there. Oh, the turret cool is going to get taken down. Good Bubble is going to connect, but it's onto the Scion, so he doesn't take a lot of relevant damage. Solar Flare connects onto the Nautilus as Chains of Corruption come through. Ruler cleanses it immediately. Great knock up there as Rascal does manage to get the Soul Furnace's fly. Really wants to find the kill, but he's not going to be able to. Life also burns down and eventually falls to Dread as Fly. Portal jumps forward and gets murdered by Ruler. That was a whoopsie. And a big one! You had an extra man! You could have maybe set up shop, you could have at least invaded the enemy jungle and prepared some vision. Oh, BDD looks for Leo and he'll find him. The Empress Divide comes out. The flash from Leo though, as he gets himself into the brush, but it's not enough. That's the solo kill for BDD. Lying in wait. Terrifying pigeon right there as Dread pounces over the wall, gets out of the way of Clid, and now Gen G. Might be able to just walk over and grab themselves a Baron because that's a 4-0-1 ruler Ezreal. And he's angry this game, and I feel like Afrika may have just ran out of steam. Um, and so will the bubbles and the arrows, and eventually are going to become a huge problem for you. And I, I know his KDA isn't great, but I'm loving the fact that Keen continues to flank him. I say as I might have pushed him. You may have. Uh, yep, there's the train. Keen doesn't have flash, remember? And uh, that Sterix didn't do a whole lot of work. And yep, goodbye, Mr. Renekton. And not enough poke lands in the interim as well as Fly flashes away from the Solar Flare. And yeah, it just feels like a freaker just don't have anything left in the tank, Chronicler. Genji are just walking towards them. In goes Clint looking for Leo as he ults forward. Says no to the turret, but it's a great knockup, and Clint's gone too far. Two kills come through as somehow Dread finds one off the backside, but I just don't even know whether it's enough. As Rascal BDD and Ruler are absolutely enough to keep pushing. I think they can. Uh, it's, it's not clean though, and they do really need to dodge these spears. There's the bubble. A yeah, bubble is going to connect. You do find the spear, but it's Rascal. <laughs> yeah, double you. It's okay. Yeah. All right, Fly, can you land the next bubble? And is it going to be onto a priority target as Leo? He doesn't find it, but you can see Rascal continuing just to stand in front and say no, as now he's saying yes. As Lahens tries to get himself out of the way, Rascal may be out of position as life takes a lot of damage. Piercing Arrow does nothing though, and the bubble goes wide. And Genji not actually going to pull the trigger just yet. So now they're down the R from the Scion, but still just chilling. True Shot Barrage this time isn't going to connect as the poke from Afrika also just going completely awry. As Fly pokes on over. Still, we're looking for our opportunity. There's the Solar Flare, and it's going to be Cloud Soul now picked up from Genji. Keen taking way too much damage, but Genji have sustained a fair bit themselves as now Afrika looking to try and get in there. And Genji say, nope, it's time to back away. We got the objective, we got what we wanted, and that is going to be enough. As once again, we have the R button available from the Scion, but we do have stopwatches everywhere. The Nidalee grabs a kill towards the backside as Kane. Oh, massive heal, but it's just not enough. And Fly's going to fall down as well. And the use by date oh. has well and truly come up here for Afrika as Genji roll over the top. Was a little bit scary there at times, the health bars got low, but once you're in an actual brawl, uh, the composition from Genji should win, as they did. Um, 33 seconds cooldown on Sign Ultimate. Uh, if you yeah, that caught me a little bit on uh, by <laughs> surprise, not gonna lie to you. I think it did a freak as well. Uh, as, <laughs> oh, there we go. One. Using the damage, not necessary at all, but I like seeing Sion ult the turret. <laughs> I like seeing BDD use his Emperor's Divide to try and sweep up some minions before the Nexus goes down as well. As, okay. yeah. Lost Joey Gamers. Oh, that's, that's, that's enough damage for Ruler to make me think that uh, I might be running into some trouble. But it's okay. No, yeah, I think it's, I think it's, actually, like, life took control of that early game, because otherwise it's just, just no, Ruler. Was, having. To Ezreal Sad Galio sounds like a just horrible time. Yeah. I mean, this is a this is an Afrika comp with zero range into Orianna. As if you do this as Afrika, is if Genji get cocky, and that is something that Genji has been known to do. Uh, 
Um, because if you've been able to force it regardless, it's live. Yeah, he's in a whole host of trouble. The hands is going to be able to grab that kill. That's just 2v2. As Ruler will be able to grab one back, as Clid's going to turn up as well. The hands trying to fight this one out, but it's not going to work. So we speed it. He's going to team up with Clid here, but they're not going to be able to get their smite in position, I don't think. And Dread's going to be able to secure it. It's okay, they're going to try and look for Keen. He's going to flash, but not quite able to get out as PDD burning down. Fly off towards the backside, and now he's free hitting. True Shot Barrage misses the rise, and he's the pivotal one here as Rascal flashes away. They dive on top of Leo, and Genji are able to make it happen. Now Rascal is fighting against the Lee Sin and just smacks him down. Now Clid looking for this one. Ults forward, lands on the two. Fly going to be taken down, and a Freaker are shredded. Horrible for a Freaka there with everything going wrong. Can't I feel like it. a Freaka should have been able to get that one done. It was Just wasn't enough as keen. He's uh, teleported oh, back God. in, but they did they didn't even they didn't even pick up the eye. Yeah. Can still find individual kills though. That's a good way to get back into the game. Yeah, there's the kickback. Looks for BDD. Finds a hula hoop onto himself, but is going to still fall down. Fly picks up that kill. Yeah, we'll see whether they can actually get in there. And it looks like they're just going to move themselves away. Ruler pops on over the wall. And uh, the Realm Warp is a little bit late and for basically zero purpose at this stage. As, uh, that is going to be the Ocean Soul once again. Similar to game number one. He's yeah. going to watch Fly meander his way back towards his lane. And I don't think, I just want to make clear, um, I don't think giving up the Drake is end of the game for a free cat. It's not looking good, but if you fight there and, and you lose, yeah, if you lose uh, a fight, it's, it's done. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now it's not done yet. Well, Shockwave is going to come through onto Fly. He's still going to try and flash and get out of the way, but uh, he's definitely dead. So it is done for Fly. Uh, yeah, did get the first turret block. So that's a, that's a nice amount of gold, but it is a bot lane out there versus your inner. Oh. Yeah, Realm Warp is going to move Dread and Fly in there. Now a teleport to answer, and that's another Shockwave connect onto Fly. Heroic Entrance comes down as well, and goodbye Rise is keen. Flashes out of the way of the Haymaker, but he's on top of four people, and will just be obliterated. A double kill for the Orianna. And Afrika, this is the fight that you probably didn't want to take. Dread gets out, but uh, you can't say the same for the solo lane. Yeah, I don't love that teleport. Yeah, Ruler has zero mana, but uh, yeah. Let's see whether Fly can actually try and get the kill here. He turns up as well, but he's done this a few times and he just dies, the majority of them, but this is taking a little while longer. BDD decides to invest the R button and now Fly finds himself on the wrong side of this one as well. As this is turning into Fiesta territory as uh, Fly does do a fair bit of damage and Life does need to try and uh, keep himself alive. But Lahens has now turned up, and he's also in amongst three people, so it's going to be difficult for him to survive. Now Leo turns up, and okay, with the Killer Instinct, going to be able to take down the Volley Bear. And there goes also the Orianna, and maybe, just maybe, this Fiesta does help out a Freaker as Leo gets a triple kill. Works out in the end! So, <laughs> could be a possibility that they might want to rally down later, as we're going to check this one out once again. Just give him up. Just, just... Yeah, just sacrifice Clint. Yeah, could have done that. You have no mana and no health. Or, and, uh, depending on which character you look at. Um, so if he wants to steal this, well, he's, he's not going to be able to. His in goes Lahens. They look for BDD. Heroic Entrance is fantastic, but now Keen will find the Orianna on the backside. And this is exactly the kind of fight that he wants for Rascal. Finds the value. The Kaiser starting to get the work done, though. And maybe he's just fed enough. Keen, a monster as he dives on top and gets the revenge onto Rascal. And that might have been sole point, but this should be Baron. It's exactly the fight that they have been looking for. That is definitely the Baron. The Realm War comes through. And it's the messiness that Afrika needed. And you see, the moment that that front to back structure doesn't exist anymore, it's on the retreat where Gen G just get blown up. They don't know where Dread is. And Dread's called there to not go for a steal that probably doesn't work out, but instead set up BDD for prime pink position. It's just beautiful. And but it's Lahen Lahen. Just the bypass Zenith Blade was so sick. And then oh, Keen. Oh, oh, Keen. Unbelievable. Rasko attempts to take him out of there, but it's not going to be enough then. The resets come through. Leo basically in QD when Fry played very well around As, the uh, Rascal and Keen down here. Of course, Keen can stop a teleport very comfortably, and now Leo's going to turn up, and this Baron is dead. 
It's just gone. Blitz not going to be able to get there in time. Smited down by Dread. Can Afrika get out now, though, is the question. Is Dread that safeguard beautifully timed? And now Afrika are just keeping them at arm's length. And Keith, he doesn't want that at all. He's just going to go in. Heroic entrance comes down, and the Haymaker is massive. Leo surviving, does have his stopwatch, does have his GA. It is going to be a single man shockwave, but is it actually going to turn the fight is the question. Rascal goes golden. He's trying to be the hero that they need is Lahens. Finally taken down, and Dread looking to be a hero, but it's not going to be enough. And Leo, killer instinct onto Ruler, but Ruler says, absolutely not, my friend. That is not going to happen. And this time, Keen survives, but the rest of the team do not. In which Afrika could do their Baron, because they had vision early on, but didn't have afterwards. So they were not respecting how much Fly and Leo shred through this Baron. And the fact that they're able to win this team fight to me is just baffling because life doesn't really get anything done. And to me, it's Rascal who is doing yeah. so much heavy lifting that it's actually insane how much he's doing, right? Because this shockwave doesn't amount to that much. Clid also being a great uh, amount of pressure. And then Rascal. So first he's uh, four man burning stopwatch. Exactly. That was insanity. Now this, and it's also Rascal. And it's also BDD with the threat, right? Because BDD was the one who had the orb on the Zonyas or the. Well, Freaka probably not going to be able to get in here. As there's a realm warp. So this Baron might go to Gen G, but can they win the ensuing fight against this Ocean Soul? As in goes Lahens, looks for his opportunity as Life finds some stunts towards the back line. Keen just healing himself back up. Keep your eye on his health bar, guys, as he does have a stopwatch. Health bar just rocketing towards full again as Dread going to avoid the Mystic shot. No one dead on the side of Gen G. They get the Baron, they get out, but Afrika have Ocean Soul. And so yeah. This Clid wanting to help this one keep pushing forward. Using those super creeps as an extra man in the lane so they can keep grouped up as uh, Dread gonna kick Clid and that is going to allow Leo to make his way in. Heroic entrance comes down as well. Leo's gonna flash to get himself out of the way. The rest of Afrika trying to get into position. Justice Punch to get life out of there. Killer Instinct on cooldown. Clid's flash on cooldown. Dragon Rage on cooldown as well. But uh, these Nexus turrets are getting beaten to death by the super creeps in the mid lane. And that's dangerous times as Rascal gets the face breaker onto Keen. Keen doesn't really care about it, but Ruler as well does a lot of damage to these turrets. True Shot Barrage lands. That's Ocean big. Trace gonna have to do some work here. See whether Afrika can actually get themselves a team fight. This is what we were expecting from the Gen G comp yes. from the get go, right? No, if, no river skirmishes, just yeah. move S5. Well, Keen. Does find himself into the back line. BDD looking to try and kite him out. Keen's health bar just yo-yoing right now as the Rise takes down the Galio. Not exactly the most important member of the team as the GA goes down for the lease in. Ruler uses all of his buttons and the Shockwave is too early on to Dread. And now Keen has found even more. Clid should go down here. Ruler still at full health. The rest of Afrika now trying to chase them down. That's not enough. Nope. And remember, there's an Ocean Soul, so these health bars, they're going to be maximum very quickly. 49 seconds on this Elder. Rascal has his teleport available. Will have flash when he respawns as well, and he's coming up a few seconds before this Elder. He has R. Flahance! Yep, they're flashing on to Ruler, but the Arcane Shifts get himself out of the way. Leo looking for BDD. If they manage to kill the Orianna, it is just huge. And Dredd snipes him! That is massive. Ruler now has absolutely no mana left as Dread looks for the Q. Doesn't find it, but there is the Solar Flare and Ruler's dead. Afrika will find the win in the end. I don't know. They don't have a wave. There's no minions. Right. Well, they, they should be able to find <laughs> the Elder Drake the and then the win, maybe. I hope so. These are both the carries for Gen G. As a freak, I mean, there's still a uh, turret here in the mid lane. Not for long. That might be it. As this inhibitor will go down as well. There's, no, there's not a lot of damage. We'll see whether Rascal's going to be able to get it done. If he hits all five members with a Haymaker, then maybe as the Showstopper comes in, Gen G is going to go for one last fight. The face breaker is okay, but the damage from Afrika should just be too high. As Leo is going to be enough to get this one done. Do they have any minions left? Feels like the aim of this. Uh, Sorry, the story in this game BDD. right now. Yes, they do. BDD going to be sporting in four seconds, but the Nexus is dead, and Afrika have done it. Like, yeah, of course. Yeah. Unimpressed. Well, I mean, Kane didn't exactly have the greatest of times. Ah. As uh, Ruler did the most damage in the game, Rascal did a heck of a lot of work.
생일 축하드립니다. Thank you very much, guys. This is Jason with the POG interview translation, and congratulations on taking down Gen G. You guys stopped your losing streak as well. How are you feeling, Fly? Ah, uh, we finally beat Gen G. I really wanted to take him down someday, and you know, after a very rough game. And series, you know, it feels so much for me. I'm touched. What about you, Leo? These days, um, we were having a losing streak, you know, we weren't really having a really good time. So this victory was a very needed one, so I'm happy that we were able to secure this. And yeah, this is a relief for us. Yeah, Frika, you guys have been losing to Genji for a very long time. What did you prepare in order to overcome the mismatch? Nothing special, you know. We just knew that Genji is also on the losing streak. So we knew that we were going to win if we play well. And today, and the previous matches, Rise uh, was on a very high priority, and Oriana was a successful counter from you, Fly. So what do you think of the Rise Oriana matchup? Because with that mid lane matchup, a lot of junglers are paying attention to the mid lane as well. I wasn't able to play this matchup in screams, so... I got ganked too much today, so yeah, I, that's a bit of a disappointment. But you did win both sides of the matchup, so why do you think uh, that allowed you to have such an edge? I didn't die, and, and I put a lot of damage. <laughs> Not only the mid lane matchup, you know, we always have to think about the jungler as well, and Trundle has become a meta right now. What do you think of the Trundle jungle? So, the pillar, you know, that E skill, it's just so good, it's OP. So, it's a really good champion, you can just blind pick into champions that doesn't really have any dash or survivability. Game 2, Afrika completed a um, full-on poke comp very Zoe and Italy. But you guys were not able to close out the game on those, so what kind of feedback do you guys have after that loss? In game two, we also had some openings to, you know, outplay, but we made a lot of mistakes, and you're not supposed to make mistakes when you're playing a boot comp. <laughs> what was the question again? Sorry. <laughs> so other than the gameplay, what kind of feedback did you guys have? Just, I think we were rushing, so that was the focal point. We just wanted to, you know, be relaxed. And after game three, <laughs> Lian in the player comp, he was like, <laughs> oh, we are so bad at Herald fight, tell us about it. <laughs> Can I answer that? <laughs> That's about <laughs> Lee Hans. Just, you know, he needs that attention. He knew that it's gonna be on air, so... And he was calling out Leo's name with different last name. Is that also, you know, being, you know, about the, um, being on camera? I mean, he does it every day, but I know he's, he's doing that intentionally to be on air. So speaking of the um, game number three, Kaisa picking up the triple kill was the moment that Afrika started to come back in game. What do you think about that? After I got the third kill, I had like 3,800 3, gold in my pocket, so I knew that I would, I would be able to carry the team. And from that moment, I focused up in the dragon team fight, you guys didn't take the dragon, but we had a fantastic fight back from Africa Freaks. So here's a replay of it. You guys just all in onto that Oriana. You guys just skipped the Galio. You know, we knew that 
Genji is weak into a wraparound play, so we were spread out on the map in order to, in order to close collapse onto them. I, I think we had a good angle. Leo, you, you were also so on point, finding the right target. You first started on Oriana and then turned to Ezreal. So Kaisa, even though she can do this kind of a thing, she's so weak in lanes, so she is actually being underestimated a little bit. What do you think about that? I think some people think it's good, some people doesn't. I think, yeah, it's a really, you know, weird or somewhat new champion, you know, because it's really fun to play, especially during team fights. Africa showed some amazing macro play and different styles game by game. Game one, you guys were very controlled, but game three, whenever you had the rise all top, you guys are going in. Is it, you know, playing according to your team comp or is that your team's direction as a whole? So looking at the um, opponent's comp, you, you knew that they have strong late game team fight power, so we just wanted to play aggressively in the early game. And also Fly, you had a haircut in the last series, you know. Tell us about your new look. Um, after the Burian series, you know, I underperformed, you know, I, that's why we lost, so I just wanted to get some, some swing, you know. <laughs> I was so curious about you getting the haircut and you finally did it, looking so fly, love it. You will be facing up against Tamon Kia in the next series and based on what you guys sh showed us, I think it's gonna be another doable match for you guys as well. I mean, I was on a huge losing streak up against Gen G and I finally overcame it and Tamon as well. We were on a big losing streak but I hope we can, you know, break that jinx and pick up a win. We are very low in terms of the win points, you know. We really have to win every series in order to keep our hopes alive. Doesn't matter who our opponents are, we just have to, you know, focus on winning every game possible. And this will be the end of the interview from Fly Leah from Africa Freak, and I'm gonna pass it back to our casters. Thank you.